And we are live all across Northwest and West Central Ohio tonight here on WOSN. And what a way to kick off league play in the NWOAL as a couple of heavyweights set to do battle here at Blue Streak Stadium in Archibald. Hello again, everyone. Alongside my partner, Miles Holiday. I'm Randy Roberts. And partner, we've made it through the non-conference part of the slate, ready to go, kicking off NWOAL play. What a big one we've got for you tonight. A couple of unbeaten square off as the Archibald Blue Streaks play host to the Tigers of Liberty Center. Uh, Randy, I've been excited about this one all week long. The mayor of Northwest Ohio, I have a question for you. Where else would you rather be than right here, right now? This is such a huge game. This is going to be so much fun. Contrast of styles, you know, guys that like to be physical, guys that like to go vertical. It's going to be a lot of fun. This Liberty Center Archibald match, year in, year out. Is there mm -hmm. any, any better match than this? And, and for the first time, really, this season kind of feels like football weather outside. And we should know, you can tell by that uh, shot of us, we are in the great outdoors taking care of this one tonight. Top row of the stadium and that fence behind us, folks, that wasn't the prison yard. That was the actual <laughs> fence that keeps everybody in here at the stadium. Uh, what a big matchup we've got for, as we said, the top of our pregame, uh, undefeated, uh, set to go. And let's uh, take a look at this one as our pregame show brought to you by the State Bank invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. A partner, let's talk a little bit about the visiting Tigers of Liberty Center under head coach Casey Moeller. Now in his seventh year, they are back to doing Liberty Center type football. Ran for 392 yards in a win against Napoleon, 405 in a win against Otsego. Yeah, only averaging, though, 8.21 yards per carry. How crazy is that? 8.21 yards per carry. Randy, they've already ran over 1,000 yards this year, 1,014. The team last year ran for over 4,000 yards, so they are on task, on pace to do what they normally do, and that's just beat people up by running the football. And they do that with uh, the combo of Colton and Trenton Cruz. Colton Cruz has run for 318 yards. Trenton with another 254. Have made a change of quarterback. Landon Amstutz had a knee injury earlier in the year. He's been asserted into that uh, starting role at quarterback unseating uh, Grady Miller, and that's kind of unlocked a little bit of a passing game for the Tigers as well. Well, anytime you run the football at will, it makes those safeties creep up, right? And eventually they get their eyes in the backfield thinking it's run, and that's when that tight end or a receiver gets behind them. And uh, Landon Amstutz, he has the arm to get it done. The thing they like about him, he's a senior, right? He's been in this offense, I don't know, since, what, he was three years old at Liberty Center? So he knows it inside out. And we talked to his coach, and his uh, father, his coach, uh, Paul Amstutz, in pregame. And I said, well, what do you guys like about your son at quarterback? He goes, he knows how to turn on the handoffs. <laughs> and then that's what you need to be for the quarterback at Liberty Center. And uh, the defense for the Tigers in midseason form as well. Are they – or, or I'm sorry, the Archibald defense, we'll talk about them. But the, they're going to go up, or Liberty's offense. I, I have it in my notes. I know what I'm trying to say. So when Liberty has the ball, Archibald's on defense. Yeah, there you and, go, buddy. and the Liberty offense is going to go up against an Archibald defense right. that held Tenor to 129 yards and 129 yards rushing at St. Henry to 98. Well, the big thing about that defense for Liberty Center is a guy by the name of Landon Bockelman, number 75. He'll probably be the defensive player of the year uh, in the league. He is a dominant force. Power cleans about 250 pounds. I call him the human forklift because he just lifts people out of the way. They can get a lot of pressure on the quarterback, not having to bring pressure, but we know defensive coordinator Matt Bryan, he loves to dial up some blitz as well. Trenton Cruz, top linebacker for the Tiger defense as well. 24 tackles in that spot, and the secondary getting a little bit better for the Tigers, and they uh, will be tested tonight against what Archibald's a pass off, passing offense can do. A great point by you. The last couple times when they've beaten Archibald is because their secondary locked up those Archibald receivers. Are they going to be up to that task tonight? Because you know Archibald will test them vertically at some point in time. Let's talk a little bit about the blue streaks of Archibald under head coach David Dominic now in his ninth year. It starts with quarterback Cade Brenner's second year running the offense 32 of 44, 388 yards and three touchdowns. But a big weapon they've got is Lucas Dominic. See him a part of that uh, trio at running back, but he leads the team in both rushing and receiving yards. And then you add in Jack Hurst and what he's been able to do both as a receiver 
and then they bring him in. If you remember Tim Tebow, yeah. his freshman year in Florida, that's right. yeah. that was kind of that's his role for this Archibald offense. It, it, the thing about Dominic is he played receiver last year, so he, he's got the ability to catch the football. He's shifty enough to run the football, and he is physical as well. He's been a mismatch for teams all year long. However, if there's one team that might be able to match up with them, it's Liberty Center because they're linebackers where they do really well. They run, right? So mm -hmm. they should be able to match up favorably with Dominic. It's going to be a great matchup to watch. But you talk about the Archbold offense, Randy. Look at those five guys up front. Well, these are the same names we've said for several years. They're a veteran group with Gensler, Siegel, Burroughs, Ripke, and Rufinock. These are a veteran group of five guys that can do a good job. Now, in last year's matchup, Liberty Center shut out Archbold 16 and other, which is the first time Archbold has been shut out since 2016. 16, you mentioned the line. That's kind of the big part of that shutout was Liberty Center controlling the line of scrimmage. Well, I remember they had Owen Box as well at Liberty mm -hmm. Center. They had Box and Bockelman, and they just abused the line of scrimmage, really made it difficult. And don't forget also, Archbold, they had terrible field position virtually the whole night a year ago, had a long way to go, and, and could not get the football across midfield a lot of time. So a lot of that defense to really go after Cade Brenner, he had a lot of physical ailments last year because he was getting hit every time he touched the football last year. Let's talk a little bit more about the Archibald defense led by Wyatt Ripke. 20 tackles, 3-4 loss, and uh, you brought up a little bit of a controversy on Twitter because you mentioned Stephen Diller. The, I know you said one of the top DBs I in did. the NWOL. I did. Yeah, Some people, is. Patrick Henry, took exception to that, but Diller with three interceptions kind of leads that, that – uh, back look at the uh, Blue Streak defense. Well, that's great because Patrick Henry will get a chance to play them later, right? So they can figure things out. But Steven Diller, just a fantastic player for this uh, defense at Liberty Center, or at Archbold, rather. Uh, and Jack Downey does a great job coordinating him, right? Um, the thing about Diller, we had him early in the year. Boy, it's a different kid from a year ago, isn't it? It is. He really dedicated himself in the weight room. Three interceptions. Him and Hurst are going to be really big tonight for Archbold because they're going to play them on the outside in the eight-man box. So they'll be responsible to squeeze everything in, force everything back inside for Liberty Center. As we know, Liberty Center, they love to run the buck sweep. Those guys will be huge. So this meeting, the 68th all-time between these two. Liberty Center leads the all-time series 35-31-1. and one. As we mentioned, uh, the Tigers won last year in a shutout 16 to nothing. Well, it looks like the Archibald Marching Band just about ready for the performance of our uh, national anthem, and we'll take a time out here on WOSN. Randy Roberts, Miles Holiday, back with you here, Blue Streak Stadium in Archibald. Just a couple of minutes uh, before we get to the opening kickoff, big matchup tonight to kick off at WOAL play. Gives us time to give you our tips of the game tonight. Brought to you by the State Bank, invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio, with skilled objective and caring financial planners. So, partner, let's take a look at the tips of the game tonight for the Liberty Center Tigers. Well, Mr. Mayor, I know you're a big fan of the squared circle pro wrestling. You remember Bret Hart, the excellence of execution, mm -hmm. former WWF champion. That is the Liberty Center offense. When they got everything going with their disposal in the run game, they are excellent at execution. Keep that up. Number two, lock it up. Keep those receivers for Archbold. Keep those short passes. Let them catch it. Go, go up and make a tackle on them. Stop them catching and running. They turn a small route into a big play and stop them from going vertical. The last two times they beat Archibald, they're able to do that. And then limit Dominic, the, the all-purpose running back. Number seven, Lucas Dominic, the smart car. He can run the football. He can catch the ball, limit him. Here's their big play for this Archibald offense. And how about tips of the game tonight for the homestanding Archibald Blue Streets? Uh, number one, big play Brenner, the quarterback, Cade Brenner, completes 73% of his passes. He's going to have to make a big play with a vertical throw or use his legs. We've watched him develop the last couple of years. He is a tremendous athlete, especially in basketball. He's going to have to make a big play with the legs or with his arm at some point in time for them to win. Number two, Tempo. It's a team that we've seen either huddle or go fast. I really think, Randy, they're going to have to go fast early tonight, see if they can wear out that Liberty Center defense. And then number three, the eyes have it. The secondary of Archbold, they have to be disciplined with their eyes. Watch everything with their eyes. Don't react to play action fakes. Keep your eyes in the right spot so you don't get fooled on a play action fake. And then all of a sudden, a seven route for a touchdown over top of your head. And again, our pregame and the tips of the game tonight have been brought to you by the State Bank invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. Defending the open 
just inside of a final minute before we are ready to go. I believe uh, Liberty, or I'm sorry, Archibald won the toss, deferred. So we will see the uh, Tigers with the football first. A great thing about this matchup is you want both teams to come in healthy, right? Well, you can check that box off. Both teams, for the most part, are healthy enough. You're going to see the best out of everybody. And the atmosphere is absolutely electric. We got in here early. Liberty Center fans, this might surprise you. They are lined up a good hour and a half before they open the gate. They are ready to go. Yeah, open the gates at 5.30, uh, 5.45-ish. And they were waiting in line well before that to uh, pack Blue Streak Stadium, which they absolutely have done. Great atmosphere for this one. Both teams looking for those elusive computer points in Division 5. Oh, and the winner also will be leg up in the NWOAL championship race. Can't win it opening week, you but sure you can lose it. Can lose it. That's right. Nothing yeah. like being behind the eight ball after week one. Don't know if the champion will make it unscathed through the league this year. Uh, it's interesting. I was on uh, Jim Funderburg's radio show today about this game, and he asked me, he goes, is this the championship game for the NWOL? I said, well, I think Wasion and Patrick Henry and some other schools might have something to say about that as well. Ready to go. Archibald's going to send this one. Fielded by the Tigers at around the 12-yard line and a little razzle-dazzle, if you will, on the return. And a good return for the Tigers is going to get the football out across the 40. This is a great opening call. Everybody knows Archibald tries to pin the corner with the kick and then allow everybody to hem in. Everybody tries to outride, outrun everything to the right sideline. Si Archibald's defenders all keyed up, trying to get there. What do you do? Run a quick little reverse. Great opening kickoff call by Paul Amstead, special teams coach over at Liberty Center. So it's Colton Cruz ends up with it as the Tigers will start this drive from their own 43-yard line. And Landon Amstutt, senior, under center, is going to throw this one. Trenton Cruz will have to stop to come up with it, and he's going to get a big run into Blue Streak territory. Finally, he's going to be brought down to the 20-yard line. Now, back to back, big plays to start this game for Liberty Center. Play action pass. Everybody for Archibald's fired up to stop the run. Hurst on the blitz outside just gets to Amstutz, but Amstutz, the senior, has the wherewithal to dump it off. Not the prettiest pass in the world, but nobody out there because Hurst blitz. Huge play for Liberty Center. And just a little underthrown, but that didn't stop Cruz. Made the grab. And the Tigers quickly have the football at the Archibald 20 yard line. See Chambers, the man in motion. He's the H back to the left side. They're going to run that way with Colton Cruz, and he's going to be stopped for a loss of about four yards. Well, Hurst was involved a moment ago, almost had the sack. This time he's going to play great outside leverage. You see how low he was taking on that inside block, the kick out block. He defeats it, and then more importantly, makes the tackle. Jack Hurst, some kind of football player for this Archibald defense. They can spot that ball up at the 22, so a loss of two brings up second and 12. Give it to the first man through, so Trenton Cruz. Cruz right up the middle, he's gonna get in for the Tiger touchdown. A day one install in a wing T offense inside trap. Pull the guard, give it to the fullback inside, great block. Right there by number 63 to spring it. And it's going to be Katie Bar the door. Boy, that was a quick drive for this Liberty Center offense. They're going to go up early. That was Steven Brogan that runs the little kick out trap inside. If that's going to work tonight, it's going to be problems for Archibald because you have to stop inside trap. Step number one and stop into wing T. Ian Rosebrook on to attempt the extra point high snap, but Amstutz feels like he's been the holder there forever. There's no problem and the kick is up and good. So seven to nothing early on on our Leifeld Industrial Welding Supply scoreboard. And we'll take a timeout here from Archibald. Well, partner, you want to talk about making a statement. How about the statement the Liberty Center Tigers just made needing all of a minute and a half 
to go 58 yards and score a quick touchdown. Yeah, inside tackles for Archbold. They uh, got a stern talking to on the sideline by defensive line coach Peterson. He was letting them know, fellas, your A-gap defenders, you got to take care of inside trap. Inside trap should not spring. But it did, Liberty Center, first one on the board. So Max Walker, who does the punting for Liberty Center, will kick this one. Do have a flag, they're gonna wave this one. And it looks like we're gonna have a false start. That's a good problem to have on a kickoff team that you got guys that wanna get downfield in a hurry. Because I, I had some guys that you had to remind them to run down. Like, I, Coach, you know I could get hit when I run down there. Yep, you sure can, but I want you to do the hitting once in a while. So it's going to be kind of like the NFL here, kicking from the 35. Let's tee this one up again. Wind's picked up just a little bit. It's really like the first fall day of the year, isn't it? Yeah, week four, about the first time it's felt like football season. So Walker will step into this one again. Sends this one deep into the night. This one's going to hit and bounce inside the five-yard line. Chase Miller will have to return this one, and with a little bit of luck and help, he's going to get out just across the 20-yard line. Now look like one of your Randy Roberts golf shots on the green right there. Hit and just die. Boy, I wish I could just stick it like that. Yeah, hits about the two-yard line and gets a little back spin on it. I think uh, Archibald and Miller thought it would roll into the end zone. Good job by Miller getting it out to the plus 20. Streaks take over just outside their own 20. We'll call out the 21. Find themselves down seven to nothing thanks to that quick strike drive by the Tigers. Brenner will send a man in motion. It's gonna be hers. Brenner looks to throw on first down. In trouble, and he's gonna go down inside the 20 yard line. A guy we talked about in the open, Landon Balcom in number 75. Even Forklift, this is a great matchup on the outside. Just gets a rip move that time. And once he gets one of those big paws on the quarterback, it goes down. It's kind of a coverage sack, really, because there was nobody open. Brenner held, 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 nowhere to throw it. And then allowed Bachelman to finally get there. Loss of three on the sack is going to bring up second and th uh, 13 back at the 18 yard line. Brenner with an em empty backfield in the shotgun at three receivers to the near side. He'll fire to one of those receivers. Pass is caught by Lucas Dominic. Dominic will get out across the 25, where it's going to be third down and about six. A nice move by Brenner, getting rid of the ball quickly. Doesn't allow that pass rush to develop. Going to his favorite target, Lucas Dominic, out of the backfield. He's a guy that they can put in the slot on the trips formation, as you just saw. Third down, already a huge third down in this football game for Archibald. Three receivers set this time out of the blue streaks. Brenner has the back with him to the left of the backfield. Hurst again will go in motion. Brenner rolls out that far side, stops, fires, and that one's going to be incomplete. Was looking for Hurst closer to the Liberty Center tire, uh, Liberty Center sideline. Hurst looked like a little miscommunication or broke off his route. Well, he had to throw it early because Trenton Cruz came flying in from outside. Good call by Matt Bryan, the defensive coordinator. Brought his inside linebacker on a Cowboys stunt all the way outside through C-gap. Forced Brenner to saddle up and throw it before Hurst was open. So we'll see White Ripke on the punt for the Blue Streaks. No, if they'll try to be as uh, know, crazy is the word about Dan Campbell going for it. The fake punt inside his own 30 last night. Fair catch is going to be Fair called for and made. I don't know that punt might have been partially deflected. Uh, Liberty Center got there in a hurry, at least harassed the punter to get rid of it quickly. White Ripke, smart move, shortening his strides and punting it right away. Uh, we'll see if Arch Archibald can do something differently defensively. And they gave up chunks of yardage the first time, and one of the staples of this Liberty Center offense is the buck sweep. They run the trap early, so you get to, you're thinking about the inside trap, and then they'll run the handoff. Old Packer fans in the NFL, the, the Packer sweep with the two guards pulling, that's basically the buck sweep that Archibald likes to, or uh, Liberty Center likes to run. Tigers have the football at their own 45, looking to throw. Pass is gonna be deflected, but caught by one of the linemen. The linemen's dream right there, right? Well, how about that? They run a fake buck sweep inside, a little RPO action, and 
Good thing Liberty Center gets their hands up. I think it was David Oregon that got his big paw up on it because they had huge yard yardage if that was completed. And Steven Brogan able to haul that in, gained a yard. So positive out of a negative there for the Tigers. Brings up second and nine from their own 46. Now the I formation this time out of the Tigers. Handoff will be to the second man through. This will be Colton Cruz. Mason Siegel in on the stop after a gain of about a yard. A good job by Siegel. Then Gomez coming up to fill it up. Kind of stops it at the line of scrimmage. And going back to that tip pass that was completed to Brogan, he, that might tie a school record for most receptions by a lineman, don't you think? I would think so. If you're if you're Brogan, you want to make sure that's in the record book at the end of the year. At the, at the banquet book, go receptions by offensive linemen. See, Coach, why isn't my name in there? Third and seven coming up here for the Tigers. Amstutz looking to throw that one, nearly intercepted. Saw Arch will do this a couple of weeks ago against St. Henry. Jumping routes, Chase Miller once again stepping in. I'm not sure if it was a deflected or is just a high pass. White Ripke looked like he might have got a piece of it, and it's a good thing for Liberty Center that that ball went high because Miller, he had clear sailing, had to be able to come down with that. He jumped, he had a great jump on it, great break on the football. Good job by that Archibald defense setting up the first punt of the night for Liberty Center. So fourth and seven will bring out the punt. 7.34 left to go in the opening quarter here in LA Feld Industrial Welding Supply scoreboard. And two guys you don't want to kick to. Back deep for Archibald. Looks like the punt off the side of the foot of Walker. Tried to angle that for the corner. Didn't quite get where he wanted to go as the Yodeler stops at the 31 yard line. And not a great punt. You can see it clearly went off the outside foot. Just a high drop. That's what causes it. Shanks it out of bounds and a little exchange of punts and Archibald works out with about a plus nine on field position. Streaks take over at their own 31. Here's still 728 left to go in our opening quarters. Cena Leifeld scoreboard, Liberty Center, the seven to nothing lead. Brenner looking to run on first down, nowhere to go. Containment held and he's gonna be stopped for a loss. Well, a lot of scrimmage early in this football game is, is win, being won by Liberty Center. That time the inside linebacker Wayland Rents makes the tackle. It's gonna be a quarterback trap faking the motion out of the backfield. They thought they had man coverage. Nobody went with the back out of the backfield, so they're outnumbered and Liberty Center just Hit Brenner again, already in this football game, he's been hit three times. Lost two on the run, he's gonna bring up second and 12. Brenner, that roll it now, is gonna set up the throwback screen, wide open space for Dominic, and he's gonna have the State Bank first down as he's able to get near midfield. Yeah, great call by head coach, David Dominic and play call. You get a defense that is over pursuing, run the throwback screen, and there is absolutely nobody out there if he could get by, he might have a bigger play, but Grady Miller, great job settling down and making the open field tackle. First downs tonight brought to you by the State Bank, invested in Northwest West Central Ohio, skilled objective and caring financial planners. High snap, but a handoff success one to Lucas Dominic. He's able to pick up about three as he'll get into Liberty Center side of the 50 yard line. Now first time of the night that Archbold has had some rhythm and you see they're gonna try and take advantage of it going to the line of scrimmage using some tempo. Second and about eight-ish, seven and a half or so. Nose of the football just inside the 50. As you can see on your screen. Brenner, no one open, is gonna take off and run, but he's gonna be stopped once again right at the line of scrimmage. Now man coverage everywhere for Liberty Center, and they're just gonna step when the receivers turn. Brenner holds on to the football. You're gonna have to get rid of that football on the break of your receivers if everybody's running hitches. Otherwise, everybody's covered up. The next thing you gotta do is take off with the football. Good decision by Brenner after he saw nobody was open. It looks like Waylon Rents number 19, the first one there, and it looks like there are windows to run, but they slam down pretty quick. This is a very quick Liberty Center Tiger defense. They react to linebackers especially. All of them can run. Cruz, Cruz, and Rents. Sounds like a law firm solves cases in a hurry. Third and eight from midfield. Brenner looking to throw once again. Looking for the sideline. That one's going to be overthrown into double coverage as well. Trying to find Lucas Dominic, and it's going to bring up fourth down. 
and Thomas Moeller, great job on the out and up aspect. Remember, you can bump receivers before the ball is thrown in high school, and he jammed the out and up through the timing of the route off. Secondary so far holding up really well for Liberty Center. Blue Streak selecting to punt once again. That's Wyatt Ripke who almost had one blocked and you see that moving Diller over to protect that right hand side. Low snap, Ripke rolls that way. Bit of a sidewinder, this one will be fielded at about the 10 yard line and nice open field tackle to keep what would have been a big return. Cam Colley had a lot of room. Yeah, Cam Colley, you can see just a little bit of a glimmer of an athlete to come. Got some quickness in those feet. Wearing a number seven reminds me of a little like a Ted Ginn Jr. A little bit of a speed on the punts. If you're Archibald, you might want to think about kicking away from him from now on. Uh, uh, Tristan Wise, number four for Archibald, had the big stop. It's just under five to go, opening quarter here in the Layfield Industrial Welding Supply scoreboard. Seven nothing Tigers, thanks to that very quick opening drive. They'll start in a shotgun here on first down. Colton Cruz will get the call, and he's not going to get a lot of yardage there. Now, you remember after that first drive, the defensive line came off, and Coach Peterson, he got into them, right? Well, they've responded. They're playing a much better job on the line of scrimmage with their pad level. That's a, a great play by the defensive front four. Everybody took their gap, nowhere for the run to go. Sets up a second and long. Say no gain on the play, second and 10 from the 22 yard line. Amstutz rolling out, doesn't feel the pressure and Jack Hurst comes up with a big sack. Well, we know what Jack Hurst can do. He's a dynamic dude. Watch him come from the outside, does not bite on the fake and more importantly beats the block of Steven Brogan who's trying to log him in. That's a tough matchup for a guard that's going out there and trying to log in a speed rush from outside. And Jack Hurst, he is sudden. Third and long coming up here for the Tigers. So both defenses have shown up early. Much better job by Archibald here of late. And looks like they're gonna go man across the board. Nope, bounce into a, a zone coverage. Trent Cruz with this one in the open space, got a flag down back near the line of scrimmage. Yardage is enough for State Bank first down. Let's see where we can, if we can pick up the call. There's a holder inside. Saw a jersey tug, yeah, it's gonna be the call. And I don't blame you, right? Creative blocking, you got a guy like David Oregon trying to get to your quarterback and you can't handle that size. I might grab a jersey or two. You talk to any quarterback, they'll say, it's okay, you can hold them as long as I don't get hit. They won't call it every time. They're gonna back this one up and it's gonna get negate a great call by Casey Muller, the head coach and play caller for Liberty Center, dialing up middle screen on third and long. So third and long now becomes third and longer. <laughs> you don't have third and 22 calls on your play sheet. So Tigers gonna be backed up inside their own 10. A little surprise, Randy, though, that they ran the inside trap for big yardage and the touchdown, and they haven't come back to it. I'd be surprised if they don't run that early in the next drive. Well, one of the few times you're gonna see Liberty Center in a spread look. Three receivers to the near side, one to the far side for Amstutz in the shotgun. He's just gonna run out of it, give his punter a little bit of running room. Straight forward out near the 20, so back close to the original line of scrimmage but I do believe we're going to see Max Walker and the punt team come back out under the field. Yeah, it's one of those plays in a football game where everybody's happy, right? Offense gets about nine yards, they feel okay. Defense isn't upset that they give up nine yards because they still set up a punt. Good move, just getting some field position for Liberty Center, see if they can flip the field with a punt. Tigers make sure they've got everyone set for their punt team. Archibald, the twin safeties back at their own 45s. One Rushed a little bit, better effort, fielded at the 40. And Hurst is just gonna slip down as the turf monster makes its first appearance of the night. Now about the hang time by Max Walker. That thing got as high as the lights here. If it was kicked a little bit uh, south, it might've hit the big windmill outside the stadium. That's a heck of an effort by Max Walker. Should we make a notice that the windmill not turned on? 
It is not. No, they don't have it on during games, do they? Streaks get solid field position. They're going to start at their own 41. 225 left to go opening quarter to Layfield Industrial and Welding Supplies scoreboard. Brenner looking to throw as a man middle of the field. That one quickly is shut down by the Tigers. It's Colton Chambers, not only a good uh, tight end H-back for the Tigers, but pretty good linebacker and is able to come up with the coverage there. Mm, fantastic work by the secondary for Liberty Center, who's played really well so far in this football game. All eyes were looking forward in zone coverage. That's okay, catch that short pass, we're just gonna come up and thump you. Gain of two brings up second and eight. Clock running inside at two minutes. First in at quarterback. Saw Hurst run a lot out of this. He'll do just that straight ahead near midfield where it's gonna take Bockelman and a couple others with Chambers to bring him down. A little surprised that uh, Liberty Center didn't recognize that. The 15 comes in at quarterback, force him to throw the football because 99% of the time when he's in at shotgun, he's running the ball. So third and one with the nose of the football right at the midfield stripe. They're gonna stay with Hurst at quarterback, their power formation. Hurst has a couple of lead blockers. Is it gonna get to the line of scrimmage? As there is about four or five white jerseys that bring him down. Yeah, the high snap really throws things off, but then what really throws things off is the linebacker, Trenton Cruz. You mentioned earlier in the game that he had 24 tackles, leads the team. He has had a couple already, but how about that quickness to get into the backfield? Came right through an open A gap and stopped Hurst. You don't stop Hurst many times one-on-one. -on -one. Great effort that time by Cruz. Does being stopped like they were on third down change what you tried to do here on fourth down? Yeah, you definitely punt the ball here, play field position again. Fourth and short from midfield. They're gonna think about the fake. Ripke with the throw. And waiting for rolling. Archibald's gonna call that a catch on the sideline. Well, this was an interesting design, isn't it? You're gonna have your punter, who's also a guard, throw the football across field after he fakes a roll to the right, and he's gonna throw a shot put. That wasn't a pretty pass, but it was a heck of a catch for a first down. Well, you're gonna beat the man, you gotta, you're gonna play the man, you gotta beat the man, and you gotta make some plays like a man. Archibald gets it done. Tristan Wise, for the second time tonight, has had a big special teams play. Had the open field tackle, he kept what would have been a big return. Comes up with a big State Bank first down catch. And after a running play, Archibald will end the first quarter. So we got ourselves a ball game. Sure Seven do. nothing Tigers after one. We'll take a break. You're watching high school football live on WOSN. All right, we'll do as the sign says, cheer, go to jail, Miles. Well, how about that? Uh, they're cheering. Seven nothing Liberty Center after one quarter of play. And Was that the big boss man down guys, there? <laughs> oh, good to see everyone getting involved here. It's turned into uh, one of the bigger rivalries here in Northwest Ohio. Lucas Dominic on the second down run isn't going to get a whole lot of yardage there. And Colton Cruz gets involved on that one, and you saw Bachman come over top like a big great white shark with that left arm. Been tough sliding inside on run for Archbold. Let's go back to that fourth down call, though. Gutsy call by David Dominic to dial up fake punt. They don't get it, then Liberty Center is in the plus yardage on your side of the field. See if that pays off for the rest of his drive, and furthermore, maybe they go on to win the football game because of that call. Now, Wyatt Ripke, not the guy you call on to make a big throw. Steps up, speaking of throwing. Brenner to Hurst, can't haul it in. Well, we talked about having to hit a big play over top. Brenner with an absolute dime. They're going to run the fake screen down here, try to get the secondary to bite, and they do. Hurst is going to split the defenders. They've got themselves a touchdown right here, but Hurst, oh, you see the eyes kind of stay high. Didn't watch it all the way in. 
is one that they're going to look back on Saturday morning and say, oh, I wish I could have that one back. That's a touchdown. <coughs> well, fourth down coming up here. Well, why do you punt here? Go for it. Run another fake punt. You went for it earlier. You know, the Tigers are going to play a little safe here as this punt is going to be fielded at about the seven yard line and a return of about a yard or two right. is a flag down as well. I think it's going to be worse for Liberty Center. I think it's going to be a block in the back against Liberty Center. So I'll be half the distance to the goal inside the 10. You saw Ripke on the punt, though, do the half roll. You know that's in there, right? Mm -hmm. Where nobody comes to him, he can just tuck it and go. This Archbold team, I'm sure they have more than one fake punt. It's kind of fun sitting in the stands here tonight, isn't it? It is. Call is on the Tigers, so they're going to be backed up now to their four. So we're sitting in the stands tonight, and we get some fans that want to see replays off the screen. We get people that try to walk through, and it's kind of fun. I, I think we should do this every time as long as the weather's warm. We get in November. Let's stay in the press box. <laughs> I, I would agree. Amstutz waits for the man to go in motion. Now he'll get under center back to that traditional Liberty look. There's the sweep that Miles talked about earlier. Going with Cruz, who's going to get out near first down yardage. There's a buck sweep. You're going to get a kick out block right there by Colton Cruz, and the guard's going to wrap around. That's Navarre leading the way. It's going to be plus yardage. That's a huge play coming out of your own end because everybody knows you have to run the football. Yeah, first down out to the 15 again, our first downs tonight. Brought to you by the State Bank. Invest in Northwest, West Central Ohio. Skilled objective at caring financial planners. As Eddie Yoder that got the tackle, third on the team in tackles for Archbold. Amstutz will get under center with those split backs. They'll do the same thing this time to the opposite side with Cruz. That is Trenton Cruz, who's able to get about five and a half more yards out to the 21. The formation recognition is so important in football. You saw the split end. He was in what they call a tight split. And there's a reason why he's there, right? A lot of times they like to come down and crack block inside, set the, set the edge. That's exactly what happened. You got, if you're a corner and you see your guy blocking down, you better fly up and seal it in a hurry. Second and four from the 21. Chambers again, the man that goes in motion. He's the H back to the left side. Handoff's gonna go to the fullback. That is Trenton Cruz, nearly had it broken, but has enough for another State Bank first down. Yeah, it's the inside trap that they ran on that first series for the touchdown. Hadn't run a sense. You and I talked about that they should call it again soon. Well, why not? You're getting double digit yardage every time you run it. Run it until Archbold stops it. That big playoff win two years ago in the playoffs for Liberty Center upset uh, Archbold. That was a huge play for them that mm -hmm. night. They must have had over 100 yards on the inside trap alone. Well, now they have the State Bank first down out at the 33-yard line. Back to those split backs. This is Colton Cruz who gets the call. And with second effort, he's able to get near the 35. That's kind of like the veer concept inside give to your fullback, let the defensive end come free, think that he's gonna run by it. But Mason Siegel, number 70 for Archbold. He's a veteran playing that defensive end spot. He was ready for the challenge, made the tackle near the line of scrimmage. It's a gain of about a yard and a half. See the nose of the football just shy of the 35 yard line. Tigers in no hurry with a seven nothing lead in our Layfeld Industrial Welding Supply scoreboard. Double wing look this time. Amstutz will throw out of it, rolls to the far side looking. Going to fire this one into his bench, incomplete. Yeah, smart decision by Amstutz. Well defended by the secondary of Archbold. Nobody was really open. Don't risk a, a bad throw to throw it out of bounds. You see the right leg of his wrapped up. He's had a couple leg injuries in his career at Liberty Center. Still runs pretty well. Third and about eight coming up here from the 35 yard line. Now they'll respot it back to where they had it the last snap, closer to the 34. And they're going to be inside of five when they finally get set. 
And we're going to have flags, and it looks like motion. Yeah, Landon Cruz never finally got set. Started out on the right-hand <laughs> side of the formation, and they had to move him all the way out as a split end to the left. Play call did come in a little bit late, so it was a problem for Liberty Center trying to get set up. It goes back to what you're saying is our tips to the game with that excellence of execution. Take a look at the replay here. Yeah, Bret Hart wouldn't have been proud of that one because they weren't set. That was an excellent ex execution and that allows that official on the sideline to finally get in the picture. He got to throw the flag. He gets to watch this one later and say, look at me, honey. That was me throwing the flag. Say, dear, that was amazing. Great job. Backs up the Tigers five yards. So third and about 14. Running a trap up the middle and nothing showing there. Yeah, Brian Burroughs is going to play it right. They try to trap him. He wrong arms at number 54 for Archbold right there. Center and defensive tackle on his football team. He is built to be a lineman. Great job in A-gap that time. Fourth down, and the Tigers will punt the football away. Max Walker out once again. Walker able to step into this one. High punt, end and over end. Short one does take a bit of a Tiger roll. And it will be downed, it looks like, at about the 36-37. And that's where the Blue Streaks will take over. A dangerous punt. Anytime it's punt short and, and you're the receiving team for it and you got guys peeling back and they don't know it, that ball hits you. That's a live ball now that the opponent can go get. Always terrifying as a football coach when you see that because you know, there's, there's some guys on your football team that are always aware of everything, and you're afraid they might touch that football. Gets up around the people that aren't ball handlers, and <laughs> it makes right. you a little nervous, That's right? That's a great way to put it. Guys you don't want touching the football. So Lucas Dominic will get the run here on first down. He'll pick up about four. I like that design. You put trips to the field, force the defense to cover the trips, and then come back to the short side field, get your running back some room. Nice call by Archibald. So we get it out across the 40. Brenner looking to throw. Has a man, he's gonna come back here to the near side. Pass caught by Chase Miller. It looks like that's gonna be enough for a State Bank first down. Well, you go tempo, right? Because you get the look that you like. Only rushing three, Brenner does a great job of getting a secondary drop. A lot of separation between him and the defensive line. Throws it on time. Archbold now going tempo again. Pick up of about seven. Gets the streaks to the 49. Hand off, Lucas Dominic right up the middle. And it looks like he's gonna be close to another State Bank first down on the run. Now yeah, it was, was inside zone where Liberty Center had vacated. And Liberty Center is gonna get their starters back in the game, had substituted on the defensive line. A couple first downs. And they're gonna, they don't, you don't need a break. Get back in, son. They need you to play football. Well, officials might have been a little generous with the spot. Looked like he might have been a little short, but they'll go ahead and move the sticks. State Bank first down, gives the Blue Streaks the ball. The Tiger 41, Brenner in the rollout is chased and will have to throw it away. At Liberty Center, every time they see Brenner roll, they bring a defender from that field to shorten up his, his pocket. And what happens is you run out of real estate if you're the quarterback, right? You roll to get protection, but at the same time, it really shrinks the window on where you can throw the football to. Stops our clock, 6.32 left to go before halftime here in the Leifeld Industrial Welding Supply scoreboard. Second and 10 for the Blue Streaks. They got it at the Liberty Center, 41. Yeah, Hurst in at quarterback again. Bunch formation to the field. They're all going to be blockers. It's red by the Tigers. And the first one there is Colton Cruz to make the stop for Liberty Center. Well, they haven't blocked Colton Cruz yet. And if you're a good linebacker and you come free, you should make tackles. And Colton Cruz, he's as good as you get in the league. One on one with Hurst, he takes him to the ground. Is a loss of about five, brings up third and 15, back in the 46. I think Liberty Center's finally caught on that when Hurst is in the backfield, he, he's probably gonna get the football and here he is again. Now we're gonna have whistles and I believe the Blue Streaks wanna talk about it. So the timeout on the field will step aside as well. Third down coming up for Archibald when we return. Third down coming up here for uh, the uh, Blue Streaks. Third and 15. 
the Liberty Center 46 and get the full effect. You got a little bit of everything. We got the train going by, we got the music, we got the student section. That turned down for Watt was playing over the speaker. Look at Hurst throw the ball. Third and 15, Hurst is gonna throw this one, trying to get Chase Miller to the sideline, incomplete. And it's gonna bring up fourth down, and it looks like Archibald's gonna elect to punt the football away. As Cam Colley one-on-one -on -one against Miller, he had him stride for stride, and you, you saw him do what defensive backs utilize so well nowadays, squeeze the receiver to the sideline. Give the area nowhere to be completed, Punt fielded inside the 10. Cam Colley with it. He'll get out to about the 20. And that is where the Tigers will take over. Now 5.39 left. Liberty Center would love to go on an extended drive here. Punch one in right before the end of the half and make it a double digit score. This is a, the type of offense that loves to do that, is chew up some clock and run the football. But credit to Archibald here of late after that first drive. They've been stellar on the defensive side. Yeah, Tigers took a minute and a half. Score what uh, has been our only touchdown of the night so far. They'll take over right at their 20 yard line here. Cruz starts as a tight end. Now he's gonna take the handoff. It's Colton Cruz. I just know if I say Cruz, I got a pretty good chance of being right. That's the thing, right? They have four Cruises on the team. How do you have the last name Cruz and there's four of them on the team and nobody's named their kid Tom yet? How have they not done that? Or at least Maverick, Maverick Cruz. Tell me that wouldn't be the coolest name over in Liberty Center. would be. Maybe there might be a couple Cruises coming still. Colton Cruz gets about six on the run, second and four out to the 26. And Stutz by himself now. Well, this time it'll be Trenton Cruz will come get it. Cruz will cut upfield. He's going to have a state bank first down as he's out across the 30 yard line. Is it me or is it every time he touches the football, he looks like he's going to score? He's just one of those guys that is so sudden with the ball in his hands. Tremendous work. You saw Tyler Lay, number 51, check into the game at guard. One of the best pulling guards that you'll ever see. He's built for a fire hydrant, but he's quick and he lock, locks on to people. Keep your eye, number 51, playing guard for Liberty Center. It's first down out to the 33. It's a quick pitch. Trenton, Trenton, and Trenton Cruz there. cutting this one upfield. Never went all the way down. Finally, he's gonna go down, down across the 40. We're gonna take a look here. See, did the knee go down? I don't think it ever did. Yeah, yeah right there, back there it did. No, it did. Well, a couple extra yards for Liberty Center because he's fighting. Gets a great block by Colton Cruz. Gain of about eight, second and two from the 41. A little confusion. You see the quarterback amps that's come over to Coach Moeller get a different call. They're going to be inside of 10 now when he's telling the huddle. Tigers break, quickly get up. Snap this one with one, just a simple play to what Miles tells me is a full back. So Colton Cruz will have the State Bank first down. Uh, earlier in the game, they let the defensive end go, kind of read it, gave it to him, hoping the defensive end goes up the field. That time, this is the old straight dive. Guard gets a man over, tackle gets a man over. You're gonna go one-on-one -on -one with the back on the linebacker, see who's tougher. State Bank first down for the Tigers out to the 46. Nothing else, they've flipped the field, have also chewed up a couple of minutes off the uh, clock here in the Leifeld Industrial Welding Supply scoreboard. They still have three timeouts, so if they get on that plus side of the 50, Colton watch Cruz. out. Handoff goes to the first man through, which is Colton Cruz, and he's gonna need a second effort from the Blue Streaks to bring him down, but not before he gets another State Bank first look, down. Look at Bockelman, number 75, just come in and crush the interior of Archbold. The human forklift just lifts another guy out of the way for his ball carry. He is so much fun to watch. Remember him and Box a year ago? Those two guys just moving yep. people everywhere out of the way. Well, Bachelman is just fantastic as well. 
Tigers to the Archibald side of the field now. The blue streak, 43. Right back to the trap. This time, uh, is that Colton or Trenton Cruz? Colton Cruz, number two. Need some consistency inside for Archibald. They'll make the play here, and then they'll let a big burst go by them on the trap. Got to figure out what to do on the defensive line. Force everything outside for Liberty Center. Just too many big plays on the interior for Liberty Center's offense so far. Game of four, that run brings up second and six. Next snap again, comes with 10 on the play clock. Nothing fancy out of the Tigers, just straight ahead football that they're known for. And it's turning into those positive yards. Yeah, it's played well by Burroughs again. He's been about the best defender in the A gap for Liberty or for Archibald tonight. Inside of two minutes, still three timeouts for Liberty Center. They're not in a hurry. Third and about three, it looks like, from the 36 yard line. Amstutz looks behind to make sure everyone is set. Quick pitch. Be Trent Cruz upfield. First down into space, looking for the end zone for the quarter, and he's going to score for the Tigers. He gets hit finally in the end zone. His own guys go over and knock him over. This is the quick pitch right here. Picture Franco Harris running this for the Steelers back in the 70s. This was a staple of their offense. Great vision, just like Franco, Trenton Cruz sees the defense part and then the speed. And how about the little stiff arm right there on Miller to finish out the run, Trenton Cruz. And Mason Siegel had a chance. He saw number 70 for Arch will dive in, try to get him by the ankle. The extra point is up and it is good. And that's why you didn't need any of your timeouts there for Liberty Center. Uh, how about a, a end of the half offense where you just run the football, right? You don't need a half, uh, hurry, hurry tempo because you're just gonna run for big chunks. That was a great patented Liberty Center drive. The Tigers get the touchdown, they go up by two scores and we'll take a timeout here on WOSN. Fourteen nothing. Liberty Center now leads uh, Archibald here as we kick off NWOAL action. What a drive by the Tigers! The only thing is, you left the Blue Streak offense a minute and twenty seconds. Yeah, decision time now for David Dominic, right? I think if it's seven nothing, maybe with one twenty, you think about going in at half and don't put the ball in a precarious spot. But now you're down two scores with one twenty. If this kickoff is a good one on the return, then you start thinking about, well, maybe let's see if we can hang some points on the board. Walker will do the kicking here, sends this one end over end. Chase Miller about the six. Gets a little open room. Now he's down the sideline. Miller to the 25, 20, 10. And just like that, the streaks get back into the ball game. Flag comes in really late. Well, this place got alive in a hurry because of the lightning in the feet of Chase Miller. I think the flag is going to come after the score. There were some problems at midfield with both teams are scrapping it up, but you're going to get a block right here by Diller to seal it. And then Miller is gonna just stride it out. The quickness at about the 30, and then he's gonna style and profile, stride it out the rest of the way. Katie Barr to door, another easy score. Chase Miller, that dude can run. But 94 yards. Now, a long discussion by the officials at about the 42 yard line and I don't think it involves dinner plans. When I saw the, the flag was thrown, it was clearly after the yes. score. So now are they discussing, I do saw we want to give them the opportunity to accept it and use it on the extra point or after so it's on the kickoff? I think that's what you're trying to figure out. I saw out. a Liberty Center player without a helmet on, so I, I believe 
there was a little scrum after the touchdown back at about midfield. Yeah, that player was Waylon Rents, number 19, and he was uh, tied up with Gomez. Might be offsetting. Well, that's an interesting call, and of course, everybody in black and orange, doesn't, they don't like it. Coach Poe is over there trying to get an explanation. I don't think that it's going to change the idea of the extra point. Liber or, uh, Archibald's a team that likes to kick extra points. Don't move it forward so you can go for two. But boy, when Archibald needed a play in the worst way, they got one. They finally got one out of Chase Miller. Chase Miller's kickoff return gets them to within a score. Now, Lance Ramirez. Now, somebody on that sideline needs to grab Coach Miller because he was really giving it to the official, doing the finger point thing. <laughs> Officials smartly just run away. Never like it when officials will hang there too long, try to bait you for that flag. Good job getting out of there. Looks like the Tiger coach is somewhat calmed down. So Ramirez, a left-footed kicker, will send this one through. The extra point is good. So 14-7 now. Minute seven left to go before halftime in our Leifeld Industrial and Welding Supply scoreboard. Again, scoreboard tonight brought to you by Leifeld Industrial Welding Supplies with locations in Coldwater and Greenville. That might save the football game for Archibald. Chase Miller going all the way to the big house on an electrifying kickoff return. And remember, we were talking, right? What are we going to do if we get the football for Archibald? And I said, a lot of it depends on the kickoff return. <laughs> Miller must have hurt us, made things easy for David Dominic and his decision processing there. Now, what do you do if you're Liberty Center? Uh, you run the, the, the clock out. You go in happy, right? 14-7. If you're Coach Moeller, you got something to get on him about at halftime, giving up the kickoff return. You know, the uh, special teams coach, Paul Amstutz, he's got to be beside himself. He takes a lot of pride in it, giving up mm -hmm. a return for a TD. It's a great night here, Randy. Two really good football teams, electrified crowd, and they're playing Timmy Trumpet on the PA. Life is good. So Ramirez set to kick for the Blue Streaks. Loves to kick it into the corner. Liberty Center tried to take advantage of it. And you see them moving here because <laughs> this is where the they call comes in. Had the ball teed up, then they realized that there's going to be 15 yards walked off for a penalty. Now, if I'm Liberty Center, though, I'm I'm high alert for a surprise on side yes. here. You better have your – it looks like they do have their hands team in because even if you kick an onside kick, don't get it. You're not giving Liberty Center a great field position start. So Archibald's going to kick this from the Liberty Center 45. See what Ramirez has got planned. He's just going to put this one through the back of the end zone. So it was really one of two options, right? Interesting. Why not at least squib it there, see if you can pin him inside. But, you know, you, you, you can't kick it deep out of the end zone very often, so give them some confidence, it's fun to do it. Now you know uh, Liberty Center is going to start at their own 20, so good decision by David Dominic there. 107 left, Liberty Center still has three timeouts. We'll run the football right here, right? Get out of the half, don't you think? Mm-hmm. Back to the I formation out of the Tigers. They'll send a single receiver to that far side. Amstutz with that quick pitch. It's Colton Cruz with it. Cruz is going to drag a defender for an extra yard or two. It's kind of fun to see an old eye formation where the fullback leads the way, gets the block right there on the perimeter. Old toss sweep. You, you picture guys like Raymond Harris and Eddie George running that, the old Ohio State eye days. People of a certain age are going to have to explain what fullback is. <laughs> That is true. That is a position that has gone the way of the dinosaur in football. This time they'll run it to the near side. Flag's going to come in here as Cruz is going to do his best to get out across the 30. So for the moment, it's a State Bank first down, but we'll see what the flag is. Yeah, it's going to be right there. I think they're going to get Navarre 
grabbing and holding the legs. No, it's not Navarre, it's actually number 20. Brooks Benfeld, the tight end who came down. So if you start high on a block nowadays and then you fall down and grab legs, you can't do that anymore. They used to be a block that everybody used, but they've tried to take it out of the game to save kids' legs. Backs the Tigers up now to a second and 15. Really all they'll have to do is run about one more play here. Run another pitch, one of the crews to see if they can break it. It's exactly what they're gonna do. Oh, the Cruz is gonna pick up about a yard. And unless the streaks wanna stop the clock, which they do. Archibald's gonna use a timeout. Hey, call timeout here, you have one. Liberty Center, you force them to try and throw or run the football, if they run the football, you know, you're not gonna get 13 yards or 14 yards, call timeout, force them to punt, maybe you get a block out of it. And Tristan Wise was the one that came up and made that tackle for Archibald setting up this third down and 14. Coaches getting together with their guys here. They take a moment, trying to reset the scoreboard. I believe they're gonna put 24 or 25 on the clock. Right now it's at about 21. Yeah, both coaches still working hard. You're playing all the scenarios in your head. You're, you're letting your guys know defensively, right? We stop them, we're gonna call timeout right away. Look out for this. And if you're Coach Moeller, one of the things that you're saying over in your high huddle is hold on to the football. <laughs> you always want to leave that huddle reminded and squeeze the ball in this situation. Problems with the uh, game clock now fixed. Third and about 13 coming up here. They did put three seconds back on. Be surprised if Liberty Center does anything but hands it off here. Back in that I formation. That's exactly what they do, straight up the middle with Trenton Cruz. Another yard or two, and the Blue Streaks do use their final timeout. Well, you, you referenced that great call last night for the Detroit Lions on the fake punt, right? Mm -hmm. Bill Coward Jr. called it, and it worked for the Lions. I'm not saying to call it if I'm Liberty Center, but that would be a heck of a call right here because you know Archibald calls timeout. What are they going to do? They're going to come after the punt, aren't they? Yeah, they are. You could get a, a big play, maybe even a touchdown on a fake punt. Now, that's one of those you call in a video game. I'm not calling that in real life, right? I'm Casey Miller, there's no way I'm calling that. Let's just punt the football. Go, go tight punt, protect your punter, kick it out of there. Maybe if I was 20 yards downfield? Yeah, field position's a big part, right? You, you don't, you get stuffed here. Archibald has two plays from about your 16 yard line to throw it in the end zone. That makes me really nervous if I'm Liberty Center. Tigers line up two punt. We'll see what they do. Chase Miller. He's already got a return score is deep. He's going to be backed up right around midfield. It's the other thing the Tigers might want to avoid is kicking it to Miller. That's a problem. Miller was electric on that kickoff return. He is a dangerous dude with the ball in his hands. Walker to punt. Get rid of this one. High kick once again. Not a lot of distance. This one takes a backward bounce and is gonna be down at about the 32. So net about 15 or so on the punt. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe 18 yards. I was trying to count it up. My math skills aren't great, but you know, you wanna get rid of the punt, but at the same time, you wanna get some yardage on it. Not exactly what Liberty Center wanted. You're gonna have two throws into the end zone here if you're Archbold. If you're Archibald and you have the hitch and pitch in your arsenal, this would be a great time to call it because the secondary is going to play off. 
Streaks from the Liberty Center, 32 with 12 seconds, no timeouts. Brenner's gonna roll, now steps back, fires. Middle of the field has Hurst, and it's knocked away and intercepted. It's a talent that comes up with it. I think number nine for Liberty Center. It was a great route by Hurst, ran the post on the inside field, half rolled and throw back to the post. And he was in there for a touchdown. Looked like he had it, bobbled out of his hands and the intercepted for Liberty Center. Second time in this game that Hurst had what seemingly was a touchdown in his hands. Just can't come down with it. Now Liberty Center with four seconds. We'll run just one more play. Blue Streaks have used all of their timeouts. The Tigers will take a knee. And before we can get to halftime, everyone's gonna throw a flag. Legal procedure. Let's take a look at it. You see Brenner, they're gonna roll to the right and then he's gonna settle up. That's by design, folks. And he's gonna throw the post in the middle of the field. Split the safeties. Hurst has it right there, goes off his helmet. Oh, and it's gonna be intercepted by number three. It that was Thomas a, Moeller. Yeah, Thomas Moeller. Looked like a nine, but it's Moeller that comes up with the big play. Should have been a touchdown though. Jack Hurst, one of those he's gonna wish he had back. So after we walk off the illegal procedure, we will finally get the final snap of the half. And the Tigers of Liberty Center will take the one touchdown lead into the break, 14-7. We'll have more as you're watching High School Football Live on WOSN. <laughs> Halftime here from Blue Streak Stadium in Archwold, where it is the visiting Tigers of Liberty Center lead at the break 14 to 7. Brady Roberts, Miles Holiday back with you here just a couple minutes before we get to the start of the second half. And uh, partner, what are some of your thoughts? We just watched that first half of football tonight. Hey, we've had some big plays for big points, right? But we could have had even more. Two drops uh, by Archbold on offense, so they might be winning this game. This Liberty Center offense, though, just keeps grinding the football up, right? Big play by Cruz. Trent Cruz, such a fun guy to watch carry the football. Can Archibald finally hit a big play in the passing game? Or will this be a second half dominated by Liberty Center's ground game? Next score of this football game partner is going to be vital. I think whoever gets the next score wins this football game. Well, that's uh, a bit of a cliffhanger. And we'll find out. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have that second half for you here as you're watching high school football live on WOSN. Oh, Randy Roberts, Miles Holiday back with you here from Blue Streak Stadium in Archibald. We laugh every time we see that PSA. It's an important PCA, folks. Remember, don't let your dinosaurs drive. Don't, I mean, don't text and drive. Oh, okay. Don't, That's don't text and drive, yeah. And furthermore, if you have a long neck dinosaur, why not get him a convertible? Or if you just have a long neck in general. Yeah, why is he in a T-top? Rambo, Rambo and Tenora, does he? He's got to have a convertible, right? <laughs> you would think. You're not stuffing that neck, yeah. No, no, that's a great PSA. You should hear, uh, we should put a camera on Randy just during that PSA. He is a laugh a minute during that PSA. Uh, my favorite part is our producer, Ken Reeker. Sorry. Uh, fighting a cold as well. It's he a little bit you. of everything going on. So it's Ken's a night to get me. What Ken Reeker loves to do is he plays that PSA and then as I'm laughing, goes, oh, hey, fellas, five seconds. There's <laughs> nothing you get every week. Every week it's something. So excited to be with you. You get half, there's there's half of Miles' face That's there. The better half. <laughs> Tigers are going to kick to the streaks to begin the second half. As Max Walker put this one in the air. A line drive effort. This one will be fielded inside the 10. Miller's got one kickoff return for a score. Will be hemmed up as uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that uh, kick return coverage was discussed inside the halftime locker room. It wasn't just discussed. It might have been yelled. 
That was definitely a point of emphasis for Liberty Center. Also, so game would be 14-0. And you are you're snacking on danger if you're Liberty Center, kicking it to Miller again. But better coverage that time by the Tigers on special teams. I also want to give credit to Archville. They got the special effects board up and running tonight. There's been music between every play. There's been a lot going on here. Streaks have it at their own 25 as we begin the second half. Brenner looking to throw middle of the field. He's got Lucas Dominic. Dominic is going to be, looks like about a yard shy of the first down. I see the backer blitz. You're going to go ahead and dump it off to that vacated area with a backer blitz. A good concept and execution by Archbold's offense. Cruz and Cruz in on the stop. It's a pick up a nine. Second and one now. Dominic is going to get the call straight up the middle, and he will have the State Bank first down. First downs tonight brought to you by the State Bank. Invest in the Northwest, West Central Ohio, with skilled objective and caring financial planners. Yeah, quickly to the line of scrimmage again for Archbold. First down on two successful plays, and they're ready to go. From the 37, three receivers to the near side. Brenner is going to roll that way, stops, fires in a hurry as he's under pressure. Pass is going to be incomplete looking for Jack Hurst. Liberty Center defensively has been shutting the door all night long. Anytime they tried to half roll Brenner to the field, and this time it was number two, Colton Cruz, who went up and shut the door. Gets an incomplete pass. He saw Brenner. The timing was thrown off because of the pressure developed by Colton Cruz. It's going to bring up second and 10 now from the 37 yard line. Kind of reminds me of the Liberty Center defense we saw in the playoffs last year when they're able to get pressure just with their front four without a lot of blitzing. You've done that successfully. First in a quarterback's going to get the call, and he'll pick up about two. It looks like he'll be shy of the 40 yard line. They put Hurst at quarterback like they did in the first half. Ran a majority of the time, did throw the one vertical route out of it. He's going to go back out to receiver after this third down and long now for Archbold. Third and eight from their own 39. Brenner back in at quarterback, has it back with him in the backfield. Looking to throw, fires. Far side, Hurst has got it, and he's gonna have a first down inside the Liberty Center territory. Yeah, watch this throw by Brenner. This is big time. A seven route to the short side of the field. He's gonna drop it in a bucket right there. That's a big catch for Jack Hurst, who struggled in the first half. 26 yards on the pass completion. It gets the blue streaks to the Liberty Center 35. Three receivers set up once again to come to the near side. Hurst in the pocket. Now it's to step up. That one is gonna be deflected and through two sets of hands and it'll be incomplete. Yeah, Brenner gets a good drop, but you see the pressure by Bockelman forces him up and then contact on delivery Forces a high throw, goes off of Hurst's hand and almost intercepted again for Liberty Center. It was Grady Miller, number one for Liberty Center. Had one of his mitts on the football. Couldn't hang on to it. It's going to bring up second and 10. Streaks move in a hurry. Three receivers again come to the near side of the field. They'll run out of it with Dominic. Trying to stretch it out to that far side. He'll get a couple of yards. Yeah, we'll show you a little bit by uh, the improvement of Brenner. You see Peyton Manning right there when he was with the Broncos. See that motion, Randy, where he's straight over the top? That's where Brenner is now. A year ago, he'd be about three quarters. He's worked a lot on his mechanics. Brenner, this pass is going to be jumped and it's going to be intercepted. Down the sideline, no one's going to touch him. Cam Colley all the way for the Tigers score. Cam Colley makes a great read on the route, an outbreaking route to the sideline. He says, I don't care if you throw it like Peyton Manning or Johnny Manziel, I'm going to intercept it. It's going to be that half roll again. See the pressure by Liberty Center to stop Brenner from getting all the way outside the pocket. The outbreaking route delivered a little bit late, and Cam Colley, young man we saw in pregame run right by us. He is a blur, and he's going to style and profile for big points for Liberty Center. 79 yards on the interception return. And just like that, the Tigers go back up two scores as Ian Rosebrook adds the extra point. We're going to take a look at this, I think, from our uh, top cam here, hopefully. 
See who's, oh, here it is again. Really, the credit goes to the pressure because you see Brenner, you see how he's throwing with a backward motion. Throws the timing of the rough, route off. And uh, there's a, a, a version of a young Randy Roberts just sprinting towards Boy, the I end wish. zone right there. Boy, Cam Colley, a young man that can go. He is faster with the, the ball in his hands. That was the University of Toledo Eye House Lunch Buffet 11 to 1. <laughs> and that was me sprinting from Rocket <laughs> Hall at 1045. <laughs> That's what that was, buddy. Well, Cam Colley has changed the complexion of this game in a hurry. Hey, we want to tell you the new WOSN Scores app is the easiest way to follow local high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, and more scores than WOSN. Search WOSN in your app store or Android Play Store. We know that the app is up and going on another Busy Friday night around Northwest Ohio. So Walker, as he did a couple of minutes ago, has this one teed up. Now he's kicking off with his team up two scores. And this one is going to be stopped. Yeah, second time they're going to get called for the illegal procedure on a kickoff. Somebody just crossing the line a little bit too far before the kicker makes contact. It's going to cost him five yards. And the wind, as you might hear on our microphones, picking up. So they're going to be kicking five yards further back and then into a stronger wind. So tee this one up from the 35. Fischl's going to pick up his flag. Now we'll do it again. Walker sends this one, more of a squibber. This one fielded at about the 15, and Hurst is going to have nowhere to go. And Whalen Rents just comes flying down on kickoff. He's a young man who seems like we've called him for the last four years. I mean, he's been at Liberty Center forever, seems like. Always making big plays early in the game. He had that tangle up at the 50-yard line with Gomez, lost his helmet. Must still be angry about it because he flew down, made the tackle. So the Blue Streaks will start this drive from their own 22. You see 9.32 left to go, third quarter. Underlay Feld Industrial Welding Supply scoreboard. Hand off Dominic, trying to stretch this out to the far side. Now cuts up field. He's going to have room. Rents is going to have to be the one that brings him down. That looks like close to first down yardage. You see your center, Burroughs, Paul. He's going to get a block on Cruz right there that's going to spring Dominic. Well, if you're a center and you can pull, you are an athlete. Burrow shows that he is. Okay, call it a gain of nine, second and one, just shy of the 32 yard line. Sprinter in a shotgun. Now he's going to be swallowed up by the pressure. Was holding onto it as long as he could. It was just one second too long. Takes his first read, stares, and then tries to leave the pocket. Pressure gets there, and it's going to be Zyder that gets him big number 33. His brother Zane playing up at Hillsdale College. You know, football is big in that family. Big nose tackle, Zyder gets the sack for Liberty Center. Third and four now coming up for the Blue Streaks, back of their own 28. It's like Brenner trying to move some guys around here. Inside of three on the play clock. Yeah, Archibald with all sorts of confusion, what they want to do offensively. So they'll take a timeout. We'll take one as well. Third down coming up for Archibald when we come back. Well, Archibald having some issues with uh, what they were going to do offensively using one of their timeouts here. 8.16 left to go. Third quarter in our scoreboard tonight brought to you by Leifeld Industrial Welding Supplies with locations in Coldwater and Greenville. Well, you hate to use a timeout like that early in the second half down by two scores. 
but you couldn't take the penalty and make it third down and nine. Brenner with some pressure is gonna swing this one out past. It's gonna be caught. It's Josiah Gomez and he's gonna have the State Bank first down out to the 40 yard line. A great design. You're gonna use Gomez to kind of chip right there. You get Cruz from going upfield and then there's nobody with him. Just dump it off. Unfortunately for Brenner, he gets hit yet again, but Gomez is gonna get the first down. Streak's able to keep this drive alive. Pick six put them uh, in a spot down two scores here in our third quarter. Brenner gets the handoff off to Gomez. Gomez be dropped in the backfield for a loss of one. And that's going to be Bauckham, and it comes down from the defensive tackle position. Comes two gaps over and makes that tackle. This is an Archbold run game that looked like it was starting to really get its rhythm. They had that big 10, nine yard run by Dominic early in this drive. They've been kind of two, three, moving to four and five yards. Sticking with it just enough to keep that Liberty Center defense honest. Second and 11, setting up a screen. And that's gonna be read by, we'll just say Cruz and Cruz. Yeah, Trenton Cruz, unbelievable job playing inside backer. Knifes through the, the line that leaked him and tried to reach him. This makes that tackle. Third down coming up here. Here's a take a look. I saw something at practice today, all right? There's the running scout team offense. There's your coach on the phone. Now, what's he doing? Well, he's calling the play. Look at that. That is a device that they wear around their belt so they can run their scout team offense, and the coach just moves the play. Archbold using technology. Third down pass is going to be intercepted. This time it's Grady Miller with it. Miller's going to stutter stub, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds inside the five-yard line. But Brenner at all sorts of pressure. It was grabbed, it looked like, by the waist by Landon Bockelman. Here's Bockelman that's going to get on him again. Pull him to the ground. Brenner probably should have held on. It tries to make a play. But it's going to be easy pickings for Grady Miller. Got his started at quarterback this year, early in the season for Liberty Center. Playing corner. He's going to give a lot of interceptions in his career. Probably none easier than that one. And they're going to mark Miller back at the nine is where they're going to say he stepped out of bounds. So first and goal for the Tigers. Chance to take a big lead. And now it's Colton Cruz who's going to slip down. Now watch Gomez seal the edge right there. Number two, that's how you stifle a pulling guard coming your way. Oh, knockdown. Let's give that guard a standing eight count. Gomez delivers a vicious left shoulder. Second and goal from the seven. And Stutz with those split backs. They run a single receiver out to the far side. Unbalanced line, pulling the guard well. Colton Cruz once again cuts up field, and it looks like he's going to be in for the Tiger touchdown. They're going to say, oh, they're gonna say short. short. Tiger players started the celebration. Yeah, never trust offensive linemen on the goal line calling touchdown, Randy. They're always going to say it's a touchdown. They're going to say his knee got down a little bit. Put it about the half yard line. Don't be surprised if you see a sneak here. Third and goal now from the one. You see just how close they are. Sam and Curtis with the camera work now. The power eye. And they're just going to be lead blockers for Colton Cruz at this time. I feel confident in saying he's in for the touchdown. You are correct, my friend. Finally falls in. Look at the tremendous block on the left-hand side, that offensive line getting it done. Now Steven Brogan moving the blue jerseys out of the way, allowing his running back to get in to score, and two turnovers has really turned this game around in a hurry for Liberty Center. A pair of interceptions has led to 14 points as Rosebrook on for the extra point. So the extra point is up, and it is good. And now the Tigers of Liberty Center have added under the lead 28-7. Cena Leifeld Industrial Welding Supply scoreboard, five minutes left to go in the third. 
Still a lot of time left for Archbold. No need to start panicking. You're down by 21. You're going to have to play flawless football from here. But it's not a situation, Randy, where they have to throw in every single down. They can still run the football. First thing, though, you have to get the next score to make it 28-14. Then you can start working from there. What a turn of events here in this second half. Hey, you feel the energy on the home side just kind of leave the stands. Uh, there are a lot of shocked looks after the two interceptions in this third quarter. Well, partner, you didn't say anything about who would get the next two touchdowns. You just said who would get the first touchdown. Yeah. <laughs> that interception and then the return was absolutely amazing by Cam Colley. Might have been the fastest interception return for a touchdown we've seen in quite some time. That young man he is quicker than a hiccup. Yeah, that was something. Someone that the uh, Tigers looking at down the road, Cam Colley. Yeah, you got to get the ball in his hands at some point in time, <laughs> don't you? A junior, uh, where, you, where you fit him in at, there's a lot of guys. This is a Liberty Center team. So, Walker, is this one from the 40? Matt one will be fielded at about the 15-yard line by Chase Miller. Miller to the near side. It's in the open space again. He's going to be brought down to shy the 30. I think it's going to be Cruz and Tyler Lay that are going to combine on the tackle, and it's a good thing they made it for Liberty Center because Miller has another crease. He makes this guy miss. He's going to, yeah, Cruz gets him to the ground, and Lay gets on top of him after that. He's going to scamper for some more yardage if he gets by those two guys. I'm not sure I kick it to Chase Miller if I'm coaching against him. So Blue Streak start this drive at their own 28. Okay, Brenner's pass to the near sideline is going to be caught. It's Miller, uh, yeah, Chase Miller with it. He'll get good yardage. He'll be second and short. And watch Colley just read the route, settles down and comes up and delivers a hit. Remember we had that Liberty Center, Liberty Benton game in the playoffs last year? Liberty Benton completed a lot of short balls, but no extra yardage because all those defensive backs came up and hit. Same thing tonight for Liberty Center. Lucas Dominic straight up the middle. It looks like it's going to be back-to-back -back State Bank first downs. So he's going to get out to midfield. Yeah, look at Burroughs working hard on Zyder inside. Good job by the interior of Archbold's offensive line. First down's going to allow them to get some tempo going. It's two big plays. Have the streaks at midfield. Brenner looking to throw, pass again coming to the near sideline. It is caught. Miller's going to have it. This time he will be shy of the first down. Streak's going in a hurry. You hit that route one more time, and then you know they'll have the hitch and go part of it because that Liberty Center secondary is biting quickly. You might be able to get an easy score if you're Archbold. A pickup of eight to the 42, second and two coming up here. See a man go in motion, get the throw out to him. As Evan Went will have it, it's going to be enough for another State Bank first down inside the 40. A nice concept. You see this in college a lot. He faked the inside zone run, holds the linebackers tight because they got to respect the handoff fake, and then throw the little bubble outside. A little RPO type of action gets the first down for Archibald. They've got it to Liberty Center, 38 now, under three and a half minutes left to go. L.A. Feld Industrial Welding Supply scoreboard. Brenner fires this time to the far side, has a man open, it's Gomez. Gomez down to the 30, so he'll pick up about eight more. The first time tonight, you feel as if Brenner is starting to get some rhythm. Remember, he's a high percentage passer, 73% of his passes complete coming into the night. Second and two coming up. Brenner to fire again. That one's going to be incomplete. And I think Liberty Center might have gotten away with him. Brooks Benfeld looked like he had pulled the jersey on the break. Slowed down that Archbold receiver, but it wasn't enough to get the call. It stops the clock here. 2.54 left to go third quarter in a Leifeld Industrial Welding Supply scoreboard. Even if you don't pick it up here on third down, 
you're David Dominic, head coach of Archibald. This is four down territory, I believe. Yeah, the rest of the night might need four down territory. Brenner, a little shovel pass. They go inside, and it looks like it's going to be just enough to move the sticks. You see the trap leading the way by Mason Siegel. Nice little shovel pass inside somewhere. Andy Reed's watching this game smiling. Guy that loves the shovel pass. Boy, if only he didn't have receivers with stone hands yesterday. Sure did, right? Hey, did you know uh, Travis Kelsey didn't play? Did you know that at all? How many times did NBC show him on the sideline last night? Enough. It's first down from the 27. Brenner now the double clutch. Looking for the home run ball. That one's going to be a little bit overthrown. A little bit of contact and a late flag coming as well. Well, we talked about the hitch and go earlier in this drive. You're going to see it right there. And then the up-breaking move. And you're going to get the arm ball called on Grady Miller. One versus one. Piercefield versus Miller. And then Miller just kind of arm barred him. You know, arm bars are okay in pro wrestling, but you can't use the arm bar when you're playing uh, secondary. So the walk off will give the Blue Streaks another state bank first down. The walk off is down to the 14 yard line of the center. Go down to the 14. One high safety. For Liberty Center, you got a shot outside if you want it. Well, option look here to Dominic. That one read pretty well by Colton Chambers is the first one there. A little speed option with Hurst at quarterback. Try to get Dominic one on one, but Chambers up to the task. Chambers had 10 tackles coming in tonight. A problem, you look at this Liberty Center defense, like, like you know, they got really good players, but their, their stats aren't crazy, right? They don't have a lot of ton, ton of tackles. Well, it's because they don't play defense much. They're always running the football, eating the clock up. Second and nine coming up here. Brenner feels the pressure rolling. He's going to take off and run, and he's going to get out of bounds near the 10 yard line. Let's see what we have. Two receivers up top coming across the formation. Brenner works his way back towards the line of scrimmage after his drop. Nobody there. Instead of putting the ball up for grabs to somebody else, wisely takes it and gets out of bounds. You see the athleticism. If you've never seen Cade Brenner play basketball in the winter, go watch him play. We had him in the winter at 35 one night. Single-handedly got the win himself. He is a dynamic basketball player. Third and six coming up here. Brenner rolling to the far side of the field. Firing again, trying to make the one-handed catch while staying in bounds is Chase Miller, but it's going to be incomplete. Miller on Miller on the outside, seven route. They completed it earlier in this half, dropped it into Hurst. That time just ran out of real estate again, moving the pocket to the wide side of the field. A promising drive now down to fourth down and seven. Blue streaks from the Liberty Center 10. As Miles just said, they are in a tough spot here on fourth down. Can get a first down without scoring just inside the five. Pressure by Liberty Center. And Brenner unable to get rid of the football sack back at the 25 yard line. Looks like Rents and Cruz Combine on Brenner. Waited the snap, and it's going to allow the linebackers to creep to the line of scrimmage. Brenner has nobody open. And you see the disappointment on Archbold defense on offense as Brenner gets sacked yet again. 15 yards on the sack. Liberty Center take over the football. Minute 21 left to go, third quarter. The Leifeld Industrial Welding Supply scoreboard. Cam Stutz, he'll give it to the first man through. It's going to be Colton Cruz. And he'll get maybe a yard, and it's going to be about no game. Uh, Cruz got to explore Oregon on that handoff. David Oregon just ate him alive. 
There's Jordan Massengill also in there. It's a lot of beef in on the interior for Archbold, trying to wait, take away the inside run game. That time they did. We'll go into a, it looks like a four-man front. Trenton Second Cruz down runners, there. Trenton Cruz. Lots of flags coming yeah, in here. Yeah, I think they're going to get Brogan right there. You can see the trap, and then he goes to the lower half. If you're going to trap, you got to hit it above the waist. Can't trap and cut. That's going to be the call. Glad to see that called because when I coached, I would yell about it every single game. My guys would get blocked that way, and I never got the call, so it's good to see. So the penalty does come back 10 yards, and it's going to be second and about 21, it looks like, back inside the 15 yard second line. And 20 for the Tigers from their own 15 yard line, second down. Don't be surprised if this is a run because they run the football here. They should be able to get out of the quarter up by three scores. Amstutz in a shotgun as a sidecar each side. Looking to throw. Gets out of one tackler, but he can't get the second and third, and it's Hurst. That's going to bring him down for a loss back at the 12. Well, one thing that Amstutz does correctly after the inside fake is hold on to the football because he didn't have anybody open and the protection kind of breaks down. But Hurst he delivers some pain on that hit. It's going to end the quarter, though, on a positive note for that Archibald defense. And that's how our third quarter will end, but a couple of turnovers turned into scores. I've given the Liberty Center Tigers the big lead, and we'll see if they can hang on to it next. Twenty-eight seven Liberty Center with a lead over Archibald as we move on to the uh, fourth quarter. I want to thank everyone watching us live tonight all over Northwest Ohio and West Central and West Central Ohio. A lot of great football games in uh, the areas tonight. A lot of leagues beginning action tonight. Oh, the WBL gets a head start with the ten-team league. Most everyone else. A big game in the WBL, Defiance and Van Wert. That's a Defiance team at 3-0 for the first time in what, since Jerry Beauty days? That's been a while. Van Wert got beat by Salina last week. Kind of Everybody was surprised by that one. Third down, Tigers just trying to give themselves a little bit of room. Colton it's Colton Chambers with it. He'll pick up a few yards. Still incredible effort by Archibald flying to the football, and we're going to get a late flag. Yeah, a little extracurricular activity. I don't know if we'll catch it. We saw something at the end of the play here. Eddie Yoder, number 59, late getting up. Here's uh, Chambers running, and you're going to see it. Steven Diller fly through the block right there, turns it back in, and Hurst seemingly on every single tackle for Archbold. And I think the flag is going to, yeah, we see up the top of the screen, your right hand side. I think Cruz is going to get called for a late crackback block that knocked Eddie Yoder to the ground. And Eddie Yoder, he is laboring over there. A good job by the trainers getting out there in a fast manner to check on Yoder. Yeah, just a little pushing and shoving the downfield blocking, all part of that. You see David Dominic emphatically telling the official what he saw. And so while they take a look at the injured player, we're going to step aside here in WOSF. That looks like training staff still looking at the injured player for the blue streaks here. And Miles, let's see if we can take a look at this one more time. Maybe we can get a better idea on what happened. So we'll there's the inside handoff, the old Sally play, but this time it's from a two-back set and the wing tee. And you can see all the 
Archbold defenders rally up, get them to Chambers to the ground. You're going to see someone. To your right hand side of your yeah. screen. Yeah, it's going to be Yoder. It's knocked to the ground by Cruz. And this is something they've made an emphasis of, emphasis of uh, years ago. If it's away from the play, they don't want you getting blindside blocks on guys that are pulling up. And I think that's what happened. Yoder is still on the ground now, getting them up. So good to see both Eddie Yoder able to get up and walk off on his own power, although he does need, looks like a little bit of assistance, but yeah, a little woozy. I think he might have. Yeah, don't hit him on the head. Yeah, might have, might have taken a shot to the head. And yeah. That's a, a big loss for Archbold. Let's hope Eddie's going to be okay. Probably not going to play the rest of the night. But uh, moving forward, I hope he's going to be okay. 17 tackles coming into tonight. It's been a big part of this Archbold effort. So a handful of uh, trainers and looks like other people taking a look as well. Yeah, they're going to sit him down on the bench here on the Archbold sideline. And no doubt they're going to go through a battery of tests. Matt I'm going to guess that he's probably got a concussion. So Tigers flagged, there was a flag on that play and with the injured player, they were more worried about that. So the Tigers have to punt from their own end zone. This one will be fielded at the 40 by Chase Miller. Miller trying to get to the corner. Miller's able to turn it upfield. Miller for the second time is gonna be close and it looks like we're gonna have ourselves a ball down close to the goal line. A great block by Hurst right there to spring him. He's going to outrun Chambers to the corner. And if you're kicking to Chase Miller, you are living dangerously, snacking on danger, Liberty Center. Miller reaches for the pylon. Okay, it's Steven Brogan that knocked him out of bounds as an official's marker still stands back at the 41 yard line. But I think some people confused for a flag. Streaks have it, first and goal at the threes. You see them still looking at uh, injured player for the blue streaks there. Now look, look, that shot looked like more like collarbone. And now we have a stoppage. And a timeout by Liberty Center. Archwell came out with the formation, the power formation with Hurst at quarterback. And I don't think Liberty Center is ready for it, so call that timeout instead of giving up an easy touchdown. But Miller has affected this game with his ability to return the football. They score here, partner, with 11.23 left. It's a new ball game. So I believe the uh, concussion test being given now to the junior for the Blue Streaks, Eddie Yoder. Saw a shot of uh, Tina Stanley there. Tina, one of the best, absolute best in the business. Yeah, super nice lady too, isn't she? Always a pleasure to talk to. Truly, truly, really cares about the kids. She's out of practice every day, always checking on them. You got some trainers that are a little bit better than others, and she's at the top of the list. Yeah. Finding trainers now has become, it's almost as hard as officials. It is. Saw a couple JV games uh, canceled over the weekend. Uh, coming up because they couldn't find officials. Others, they moved to like 9 a.m. so officials could be there. Folks, if you want to help the game of football out, sign up to be an official. So there's Jack Hurst trying to run his way in, and it looks like he's going to get the blue streak touchdown. Well, this was all second effort because initially he is stopped up right there by Liberty Center, but he just keeps feet fighting with his feet, and then the last little reach over, and he gets it. Great effort by Jack Hurst. Makes it 28-13 as Ramirez will come on to attempt the extra point. Liberty Center having problems getting the right personnel on. It's been a special team's nightmare tonight for the Tigers. As Ramirez will add the extra point. So now 28-14, 11-17 to go in the Leffeld uh, Industrial and Welding Supply scoreboard. Streaks hanging in there. Well, I'm Casey Moeller. I'm going over to Paul Amstutz or on the headset and say, Paulie, I love you, man. You're a great special teams guy, but we're not kicking it to Miller the rest of the night. He, he has been the offense for Archbold on big plays. 
and he's kept the, the Blue Streaks back in this football game. Also, another thing, David Dominic has been known at Archbold to use a little surprise on side here or there. This would be a great time to dial it up right here Ooh, down by two scores. I think there might be something tricky going on here. If Archbold could steal a possession, It'd be huge in their effort to come back. See what they've got planned. This is just week one in the NWOAL. A oh, fun league, isn't it? So many communities in this league care about their athletics. Ramirez has this teed up. See what they do here. He's going to send this one into the night. High short Collie kick. Collie straight up the middle. And they might go score for score. Collie with the INT. How about an INT and kickoff return score night? We're talking about how to get the football to Camp Collie because the Duke can run. Well, how about kicking it to him and letting him run? Oh, this has opened up in the worst way for Archbold. Just a little bit of a seam in the middle, and he's one-on-one -on -one with a kicker, and the trip didn't work. Cam Colley, dude is electric with those feet. Well, just like that, we're back to a three-score ball game. If you like special teams, this has been the game for you. It's a special teams explosion. There he is over on the Tigers sideline getting congratulations from his fellow players, and rightfully so. He's been absolutely huge for Liberty Center tonight. So here's Ian Rosebrook on for the extra point. This yeah, one is going to be up and good. So 35-14 with 11.06 to go. And now Paul Amstutz looks like a genius again, special teams coach for the Tigers. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Paul Amstutz. Uh, things are bad, things are great, things are bad, things are really good. That's, that's the life of the special teams coach right there. Everything's good now because you had to kick off return for a touchdown, you're back up by 21. And if you're Archibald though, how def def deflating is that return right there? You did everything you could to claw back in. Claw back into the game and then you give up an easy one. That is, oof, that is tough. I thought that was the wind blowing through you there at first, it, but. It is starting to get a little bit chilly in here. So folks. Randy and Miles with you here. Let's see on our LAFL Industrial Welling Supply scoreboard. 11.06 left to go here at Blue Streak Stadium, but uh, kicking off what's going to be an exciting year in the NWOAL. Two of the heavyweights battling here. Well, Patrick Henry, it looks like he's going to get a win over Evergreen tonight. They're one of the teams expected to contend. Wasion looks like they're uh, on their way to a win over uh, Swatton tonight. So Wasion, another team expected to contend so uh yeah patrick henry you got bill inselman 250th win mm -hmm. a week ago congratulations on that fantastic and uh boy nash meyer their quarterback he's one of the best in the area throwing the football they're gonna yeah. be fun to watch just forward. broke the school record for uh, career passing yards just over six thousand. i think you know the uh man's record that he broke brian heber so here's jack hurst Trying to match return for return. He's going to be brought down just past the 15-yard line. Yeah, we talked to Brian Heber about that not too long ago, and he said, hey, I had to do that under center. <laughs> we didn't have shotgun when I played quarterback. Coach Inselman said, yeah, I probably should have put him back at shotgun. He would have got more yards back in the day. You well, know, we heard uh, Coach Inselman, the NWOAL's preseason coaches meeting, how excited Coach I was that he's going to use the tight end again <laughs> after going to the spread. And now the officials are going to hold the play here, as I believe, yeah, they're going to. Saw the ambulance that uh, sits in the corner. It got fired up, and I think for uh, precautionary reasons, let's see. Uh, that's o Yoder going over that. Eddie yeah. Yoder, who left the game after that hit by Cruz. Second out after the uh, short run here for the Blue Streaks. Well, it's at the time of the game for Archbold. They, they're going to have to score every single time that they have the football and get back-to-back uh, -back three and outs against Liberty Center. Some confusion by Liberty Center on defense. 
Okay, going to the three-man front, sending everyone else back in coverage. Renner's pass is going to be caught shy of the first down. Finding a uh, new target, Brody Bailey's first catch tonight. And Bailey had a touchdown over here a couple weeks ago against St. Henry. Another capable receiver, but uh, third down. You said it a couple drives ago, gonna be four down territory moving forward for Archbold. They, they definitely want to pick it up here so they can get some rhythm going on this drive. Yeah, just under 10 to go in our Leifeld Industrial Welding Supply scoreboard. Streaks feel pretty good about themselves, put the uh, drive together. Made it 28-14, now the pass. A sidearm effort completed it to Dominic, and that's gonna be enough for the first down. Well, arrow route, you clear it out, and then come back to the vacated spot. Dominic's gonna get the first down. First downs tonight again, brought to you by the State Bank. Invested in Northwest, West Central Ohio, skilled objective and caring financial planners. And we also want to say hi to Eric and Marsha Lehman. Runner under pressure is able to get rid of the football. Diller will get this one out across the uh, 35. A little uh, inside RPO action. Good job by Brenner. Initial route wasn't there. Yoder didn't. Dill, Dill, Stephen Diller didn't give up on it. Hit him back on the out route part of it. Lucas, Dominic Lucas Dominic's second and short run. Looks like he'll have enough for another State Bank first down. Ken, what's just on us to make sure we just say, should we just, the entire Reeker family, just the, the extended family for the Reekers as There's well? There's a lot or? of Reekers. Ken's got a huge family. So after the State Bank first down, Brenner looking to throw, goes to the far sideline, pass is complete. Finding Evan Went. Went will have it near midfield. A three-man rush picked up well by the offensive line of Archbold. Going to give time for Brenner. Finds Went going to the sideline. Gets out of bounds. Second down and one. Streaks trying to move quickly. It's like the Tigers overloading to the, the uh, strong side and a run is going to be shy of the first down. Trenton Cruz from his inside backer spot comes all the way looping around, gets involved on that play, stops it before they can get the first down. Now it's third down and one. Trenton Cruz leaves the field though, looks like he has an equipment issue. Tyler Lay checks back in at linebacker number 51. Streaks trying to come up with a first down here. Runner with the handoff. This time it is Gomez. Gomez able to get in front of a couple blockers. He'll get the State Bank first down as he's going to get inside the Liberty Center side of the field down to the 47. Now watch number 70, Mason Siegel take his man. Keep driving, driving. He's going to get himself a pancake block leading the way. Fresh set of downs for streaks here. Seven and a half minutes left to go in early field industrial welding supply scoreboard. Moving the football, but taking too much time. Archwell gonna have to pick up some tempo. Remember, they've got to get three scores. Brenner setting up the screen. Gomez is gonna lose the football. Tiger players say they have it. The officials are gonna agree. Oh, let me tell you, this is the best way you can play a middle screen ever. Check out the recognition right there. Sees it and then chases it down and chops it out from behind. Hunter Spangler, oh, he is a sweet, sweet defensive lineman right there. How about the speed of Spangler catching the speedy Gomez from behind, chopping it out. Oh, defensive lineman's dream right there. Good looking sophomore is gonna give the Tigers two more years. I need, I'll go figure, another big kid for Liberty Center inside. The Tigers from their own 41 are gonna to look to throw. They might try to put the nail in the coffin here. Late flag coming. 
see what this is going to be. Tiger faithful on the far side away from us making noise. Hey, you've heard of the Bronx cheer before, right? Everybody at Liberty Center clapping because they got a call their way. So that'll be 15 yards. That's going to bring the ball into the Archibald territory. It was a one-step fade thrown by Amstutz. And they're going to say too much collision on the outside by the secondary of Archibald going to be pass interference. And thankfully for Archibald, just 15 yards. And I like to say this to remind people, never, ever expect a spot of the foul uh, penalty in college, high school football. That'd be awful, wouldn't it? I, I'd like to see it removed out of the college game. Yeah, yeah, I, I would like that too. 15 yards is just enough. Honestly, I'd like to see it removed out of the professional game as well. There's Trenton Cruz. Cruz take the pitch, cuts right upfield inside the 40. He'll get to about the 36. Get blocked by Rents right there, I believe, that got the kick out block, and then Cruz flies upfield for positive yardage. Second and two coming up here. Tigers right now have two objectives, run up the clock and uh, try to keep everyone healthy. Something tells me, though, they want to tack another one on here. They're playing with a little more urgency than a team up by three scores. Amstutz under center, give to Trenton Cruz. Cruz will have that state bank first down as he's able to get inside the 35. Okay, another block by Rents to spring it. As you watch this run game, I called the excellence of execution earlier tonight. Watch the pad level. Even the, the lead blocks that go get a guy at the second level always have their shoulder pads below the numbers. They do such a great job of locking on to guys and driving. It's Tigers now from the 33. It looks like we're going to see some uh, fresh bodies in the backfield. Back to that power eye. And they'll give to the first man through this time. It be Xander Zyder. So when I coached here in the uh, mid Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan, you saw that formation and it was called the Chicago Eye. Now you go down to Tennessee, it's a smokestack eye. Okay. So it all depends on what part of the country you're in. I uh, said so it's three guys in a, an eye formation. I always grew up calling it the power eye. Power eye to us was when one guy was offset to okay. the right or left. Well, I know the double wing. Yep, you do. Pitch to Chambers. Chambers with a little bit of running room. Chambers is going to get in and get the touchdown for the Tigers. Colt Chambers is going to put this one away with a 31-yard touchdown run. Yeah, this is one of those runs where they've worn you out. Look at all the guys leading the way. Navarre leading the way. Brogan leading the way. Look at the block by Navarre, 15 yards upfield. And a good block by Cruz to spring them. Just an attitude run. They've worn you down. Next thing you know, your ability to fight back is gone because they have hammered you too much. Rosebrook on for the extra point. And he has been perfect all night long and adds one more. So now 42-14, Liberty Center with a big lead over Archibald. And we will take a break here on WOSN. Forty-two, fourteen, Liberty Center, comfortably ahead of Archibald here. Five oh three left to play. The Layfeld Industrial Welding Supply scoreboard again. Our uh, scoreboard brought to you by Layfeld Industrial Welding Supplies. Locations in Coldwater and Greenville. Well, definitely not the night that Archibald was hoping for. But you know, looking ahead, there's winnable games coming forward. They got Delta away next week, Evergreen at home, and Swan at home before their big showdown against that rival Wasian. And then they'll finish up at home against uh, Patrick Henry, then away at Bryan. So a lot of winnable games on the schedule for Archibald moving forward. Kickoff taken near the goal line. As the Tigers. Very dangerously kick it to Chase Miller. He 
kind of rocked over top that goal line, came out with it. This is one of those guys that every time he, he touches a return, you're like, oh, hold your breath. He might spring it. And moving forward for Liberty Center at Swanton next week. And then home against Bryan, home against PH. That's a game that's interesting to me. You, you wonder, you think Patrick Henry is going to be able to score some points on them, right? Not many teams you think can, but you wonder if they will. And then away at Evergreen, home Delta, home Wauseon to finish out the year. That Wauseon team, and Parsons throwing the ball to Rodriguez, it's a dangerous team as well. Wauseon team went to uh, Eastwood, picked up a tough win, closed the non-league slate. Archibald uh, putting some fresh bodies out there is we see Jarrett Rubinoff, freshman in at quarterback now. Dominic had to squeeze that ball twice. He saw it kind of pop out of his belly for a second after the handoff. So after the one yard run, second and nine coming up here. And Rufin knock just a freshman. 5'10", 140. Here's Dominic straight ahead. He'll get a handful of yards out near the 30. There's still some woofing going on between the players. Saw it after that play. Archibald, of course, a prideful program in Liberty Center. They're, they're never going to back down from anyone that wants to be physical. Third and about two here, just under four to play. Ruvenal with the handoff, and that Tiger defense is going to hold, and they're going to set up a fourth down. Young guys getting in, holding true to the principles of Liberty Center defense, running to the football. More than one guy makes the tackle. Fourth down, and it looks like Coach Dominic going to like to go ahead and punt this away. Fourth and one from your own 31. Down 42-14. So White Ripke will punt this one away. We will have a flag. Delay game is going to back up the Blue Streaks five more yards to send this punt. High short punt bounces at about the 45. Bit of an Archibald roll. It's going to be down quickly at the 42-ish. That is where the Tigers will take over. Number seven. It's 2.47 left to go to Layfeld Industrial Welding Supply scoreboard for Liberty Center. Tigers try to grind out just a couple of first downs here. It looks like we've seen some younger guys for the Tigers as well as Mason Smith, sophomore, takes over at quarterback. First down run's gonna be straight ahead and it's gonna be enough for a State Bank first down here as they go to Ted Weinbrink, sophomore. Tigers will get to the Archibald side of the field at the 45. Stretch this out to the near side is Thomas Moeller, son of the head coach, get a little bit of action. He'll cut up field, pick up about six. Second down coming up here from the 39. 
Tigers really need about one more first down. Back to the split backs with an H back that way. Quick pitch, trying to stretch this Ty out. Jackson, Cutting up field to be Ty Jackson, a sophomore. Flag Jackson, is Jackson. down, back to the line of scrimmage. We'll see what the flag is. We have a flag on Looks like an illegal chop block to call. So back up the Tigers five yards. Actually gonna back them up a lot more than five yards at the illegal block. After the game concludes, stick with us. We'll have our uh, Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner tonight. Isaac Orth, ball carrier. As Isaac Orth with a carry as well. Our Miles Holiday's left our announced stand, has made his way down to the field. He'll uh, be with our Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner. Third and 15 coming up here for the Tigers. Trying to run this down where they're only gonna have to stamp the ball one more time. Let that play clock run all the way down, still at 10. And it looks like just taking a knee will be Smith. And that should set up to where the Tigers will not need to run another play. So the final 30 seconds will have to run off, but it's not gonna matter. Teams are gonna begin to make their way near midfield. And the Tigers of Liberty Center are going to open up NWOAL play with a big statement win as the Tigers have come to Archibald and defeated the Blue Streaks tonight, 42 to 14. We'll take a timeout when we come back. We'll be joined down on the field as our Miles Holiday. We'll have our Stally Insurance Hustle Award winner right after this. A big win tonight for the Tigers of Liberty Center as they've come to Archibald and defeated the Blue Streaks 42 to 14. Tigers set the tone early, scored on a quick drive Took about a minute and a half, and then once Archibald closed the gap, Liberty Center was able to take advantage of a couple of uh, thrown interceptions. One returned by a pick six. Second one led to a touchdown drive, plus a return, uh, return score by Cam Colley. Part of the reason why the Tigers have knocked off the Blue Streaks tonight here, 42 to 14. So. Uh, Tigers get that uh, big win. They'll move to 4-0, 1-0 in the NWOAL. Archibald will fall to 3-1 and 0-1. Oh and so you see the Tigers having that uh, huddle broken up with their uh, coaches. There'll be a few of uh, the pride push-ups that uh, travel really well for the Tigers. And then after that, we'll see if somewhere in the uh, sea of humanity is our, there is, Miles is easy to spot with the blue pants. There, oh, it's on cue with a smile and wave. He's ready to go. Now we'll see the uh, Tigers. First they'll sing the alma mater and then the pride push-ups. Also, I, I get impressed because the student section does them as well. So everyone gets a little workout in after the game. So 42-14, the final will take another timeout. Come back with our Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner when we return. Uh, one more time, we uh, welcome you back here to Blue Streak Stadium in Archwold, where again Liberty Center's knocked off the uh, Blue Streaks 42 to uh, 14 as our. Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner is a very busy guy. He's going to literally hustle 
his way over to our Miles Holiday. I believe uh, someone else might have grabbed him first, and we'll see if we can be quick. You know, Randy, when you're a big time player, you become a media magnet, right? I guess. And uh, Cam, Cam's getting that big star treatment right now, but he's only going to get one help from one uh, media <laughs> outlet, and that's the guys at WOSN. So I guess we we'll kind of let the cat out of the bag there, but we'll go ahead. And I guess we, we don't need him physically to announce it. Cam Colley of the Tigers on his uh, interception return, kick return, part of the reason why he is going to be our uh, Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner tonight. And as soon as he's done with uh, some other media friends, he will we'll make his way to our Miles Holiday. Big win for the Tigers, so they continue that momentum. It was not that long ago where it felt like Archibald kind of owned this series, and it really kind of dated back a couple of years ago to that playoff win where everyone thought Archibald was going to kind of roll over everyone as they had in the regular season. Tigers got out to that huge lead and then ended up getting uh, the uh, interview. So our uh, Miles Holiday looks like he's gonna have to track down our young man for the interview. So we wanna thank everyone uh, for uh, watching tonight. So again, Liberty Center gets the win 42-14. Wanna thank everyone who's made uh, our night here possible WOSN starts with uh, Alan Gladio, the athletic director here. Well, as uh, Curtis Aldridge, Samantha Ryan for the work they've done on the cameras, and of course, our director, Ken Reeker. So for my partner, Miles Holliday, who is with our Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner. So as soon as Miles can get in range, we'll see if we can send things down to our Miles Holiday. All right, I got him right here. He is the man of the hour, the man with the power cam, Kali, our Stolly Hustle Insurance Award winner, and our Dyna get the helmet. Let's come this way a little bit and make sure this microphone picks you up. Big smile on your face. Uh, tell us a little bit about the biggest game you've ever played tonight. Yeah, by far, by far. Uh, you definitely deserve it, though, because the break on the interception. Walk us through that route. You saw it was an outbreaking route. How big were your eyeballs when you recognized it? Very big. I think that's the biggest they've ever been in my life. <laughs> I wanted that one. <laughs> Without a doubt. Now, you took off and scored that in record time. Are you faster with the football in your hands? Oh, uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think it kind of gives me some, like, pride. Yeah. I got the football. I got to go. And that a big moment in this game. Uh, you know, the, Miller for them was fantastic on special teams, and then they kicked it to you. Uh, did you guys have a middle return on, or was that just so you just ran to daylight? It was middle return. It was green grass everywhere. I just ran straight. All glory to my teammates on that one. Coach, uh, afterwards, I gave you guys the message that physicality got it done tonight. How big is that? You hear that word with your program all the time. How important is physicality to you guys? Uh, it's probably the most important thing. You know, we may not be the biggest, may not be the strongest, but we got to come out here and punch them in the mouth every night. This is a huge rivalry, but you guys have won the last three. How have you guys been able to do this? Uh, a lot of scout, a lot of film study. You know, coaches put their time in for us. Fantastic. Good luck going forward. Now it's your big media star. Don't forget about us, all right? Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Cam. So, again, Cam Colley, our uh, Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner. And, again, we want to thank everyone made our night here at Archibald possible, The uh, starting with the AD here at Archibald Schools, Alan Gladio. And, again, thank uh, Curtis and Sam for the work they've done behind the camera. And, of course, our director, Ken Reeker. So, for my partner, Miles Holiday, I'm Randy Roberts. Good night. Liberty Center gets the win over Archibald.